Welcome to In the Desert of Set, a pagan and occult website by G.B. Marion. I'm G.B. Marion. I write about life as a polytheist in contemporary times with random, long-winded detours into ancient history, classic horror movies, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Won't you join me for today's adventure? If you'd like to read a free electronic print copy of the following recording, please visit desertofset.com. Set is a very complex deity with more names than anyone can count. We can't even be 100% sure of how the name Set itself was originally pronounced. All we know for certain is that it contains the consonants ST. We don't know which vowels might have been used. The following is my attempt at explaining what some of Big Red's names actually mean, or, at the very least, what they mean to me personally. However, we must always remember the fact that in Egyptology, new discoveries are made every day, and sometimes an accepted theory will need to be updated or even discarded. For this reason, nothing I say here about Set's names should be considered definitive or taken as gospel. This is just one Setian's perspective on these various words of power, so take from it what you will. As an additional note, this is not an exhaustive list of Set's names by any stretch of the imagination. There are far too many of them for me to count, and quite a few seem impossible to translate. The following list is limited to just those names and titles that I actually understand and use. Set the most basic and well-known name for Set. Its variants are clearly determinative to various Egyptian words for storms, violence, and upheaval. The Greek writer Plutarch suggested that it might mean the overmastering or overpowering. This is the most popular form of the deity's name among contemporary pagans. Seth. The Hellenized version of Set. Very helpful for finding quality sources about the deity in academic literature searches. Try searching for the name Set, and you'll get results on everything from the actual god to random kitchenware. It also happens to be homonyms with the name of the third son of Adam and Eve in the Bible, who is a totally unrelated figure. So Seth is really best used in conjunction with the additional name Typhon to clarify when one is actually referring to Set and not to the biblical Seth. Sutek. This variation of Set's name was popular in the Nile Delta region of Lower Egypt. As Sutek, he was equated with the Hyksos chief deity, the thunder god Baal Hadad. This led Set's cult to adopt many non-Egyptian elements, including the Edfu tale of how he rescued Ishtar from the sea monster Yam. I refer to Set as Sutek most often when I pray to him alone. Suti. This is probably the closest to how Set's name was originally spoken in Upper Egypt during pre-dynastic times prior to 3200 BCE. I don't see or hear people use this variant very often, but I sometimes use it during prayers, especially in times of great need. I feel like calling Set by this name is like calling someone by an intimate pet name they don't want anyone else to know about, such as Pookie. Which I would only suggest doing if you were already on good terms with Big Red. Aberamentho, Lord of the Waters, a name that is given to set in the Demotic Leiden Papyrus, and which likely refers to his power over the forces of chaos. Strangely, Set shares this name with Jesus Christ, for whom it is also used in the Pistis Sophia. I believe this name represents a point of intersection and dialogue between Setianism and Christianity, and it always makes me think of the Alexa Menos Graffito. Ash. The name of a Libyan desert god who was identified with the holy Shah animal of Set and who was believed to guide travelers to oases. There seem to be two different theories about Ash. One, that he is an entity distinct from Set, possibly a gay consort. Or two, that he is an alternate form or aspect of Set himself. 
It could be that the two gods are separate divinities, but that Set will also answer to the name Ash if it is ever used for him. Either way, because of the way it's spelled, I can't help but think of Ash Williams, played by Bruce Campbell, the protagonist in the Evil Dead movies, whenever I see or hear this name. Baal an ancient Semitic title that means Lord, and which was used for many different storm gods throughout Mesopotamia. It was inherited by Set when he was identified with the Hyksos deity, Baal Hadad. I sometimes refer to the big guy as Baal Sutek, or even just my Baal, when I pray, but it must be understood that Set is not synonymous with all the other divinities who answer to this name. And just in case anyone might like to know, the feminine equivalent is Baalat. Yao Sabayoth. A Greek corruption of the Hebrew words Yah, taken from Yahweh, and Sebhayoth, or armies, which together mean Lord of Hosts. This name is used in several invocations to Set in the Greek magical papyri. For me, it represents Set's fondness of donkeys, his sympathy for the Jewish people in late antiquity, and his eternal vigilance against the Chaos Serpent. Nubti Meaning Golden One, this name was used for Set in the pre-dynastic Nakata civilization. It refers to the prominence of his worship in Nupt, a gold-mining desert town in Upper Egypt that later became known as Ambos. I think this name represents Set as a god of life on the frontier who helps his people find prosperity in the wilderness. <laughs> Typhon Meaning whirlwind, this name was given to Set in late antiquity. It belonged to a monster in Hellenic mythology, and its association with Set was originally an error. But an entire magical system was developed in which Set is identified by this name, the Greek magical papyri, and the system happens to work. Typhon also sits well with Set's aquatic aspect, complementing his role as a desert god. I especially like to use this name while praying to Big Red by the seashore. The Great Longhorn, set as the celestial bull. In this form, he crushed Osiris beneath his thigh, which was later amputated by Horus. Set's thigh was then chained to the pole star, whereupon it became the Big Dipper, or as the Egyptians called it, the bull's thigh. This aspect of Set always reminds me of the Bull of Heaven in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which also had one of its legs removed and converted into a stellar object. great of strength, set as the one god who is strong enough to put other gods in their place, as well as to fight the Chaos Serpent face to face. I associate this title with Set's linear immortality, the fact that he neither dies nor rises again, which distinguishes him from the rest of the pantheon. He before whom the sky shakes, set as the god of thunder and storms. I think it represents him as this incredibly destructive force that could potentially destroy the entire cosmos at any time, but which decides to protect the world from monsters instead. Set is the single most frightening entity in existence, and yet he is on our side. He of the Two Faces A reference to the secret of the two partners, or the idea that Set and Horus are really two aspects of the same god. This concept is depicted in Egyptian art as a humanoid figure with both the head of Horus and the head of Set, which I regard as the Egyptian precursor to the Tao. Naturally, the secret of the two partners works both ways, and he of the two faces can also be used as a name for Horus. Lord of the Red Lands Set as the Lord of Deserts just as the deserts surrounding Egypt provided a buffer of sorts that protected the country from the rest of the world, so too does Set provide a buffer between our created universe and the primordial chaos. A shorter version of this title is Red Lord, which I use all the time. Lord of Twofold Strength 
This title reminds me of Set's dual nature as both an instigator of change, as seen in the Osirian drama, and a defender of the cosmic order, as seen in the execration of Apep. Master of the Imperishable Ones Set as the Lord of the Circumpolar Stars The Egyptians considered these stars to be ancestral spirits who have achieved the same linear deathlessness that Set experiences, hence the term Imperishable Ones. These stars never descend beneath the horizon, unlike the sun, the moon, and the planets of our solar system, but are always located at the center of the sky, for those of us living in the northern hemisphere at least. This reveals the stellar and nocturnal origins of Set's worship. Champion of Ra Set as the hero who protects and defends Ra from the Chaos Serpent each night. Ra dies and rises again each day, and they are attacked by the monster while undergoing their regenerative process. If the serpent ever succeeds in swallowing Ra, all things, including the rest of the gods, will cease to exist. When Thoth negotiated his truce between Horus and Set, part of the bargain was that Set would become Ra's personal bodyguard. He has served Ra in this capacity ever since, and the fact that our universe continues to exist is a testament to his ultimate benevolence. This title is very important to me because it's an important aspect of Set that most people don't know or think about. Son of Newt While he isn't the only son of Newt, Osiris being the other one, Set is the god who is most often identified by this title. This is due to the circumstances of his birth, for while Osiris, Isis, and Nephthys were all born in the natural way, Set clawed right out of the sky goddess's womb. This couldn't have been pleasant for Newt, but it gives Set the distinction of being the only god aside from Ra to have willed himself into existence, according to the Heliopolitan cosmogony, at least. Big Red An affectionate abbreviation of Red Lord or Lord of the Red Lands that many of Set's people use for him all over the world, myself included. Cloven Hoof A term for the Christian devil that's inspired by his association with goats. Cloven hoofed critters are members of the order Artiodactyla, which happens to include most of Set's sacred animals, including antelope, hippopotamuses, oryx, pigs, etc. If Christians can demonize Set and incorporate him into their version of the devil, then it's only fair for Setians to reclaim so-called satanic terminology for Set. So I will sometimes call Big Red the Cloven Hoof in reference to his sacred animals. Holy Jackass! Humorous title for Set that we coined right here in the LV-426 tradition. It refers to both Set's affinity for donkeys and the fact that he's a Hellraiser. Prince of Darkness. Another term traditionally used for the Christian devil. It was reclaimed for Set by members of the Temple of Set in the 1970s. It might sound lurid, but it does make a certain amount of sense. Set is a prince, after all, and he does rule the northern sky and the nighttime world. I don't use this title very much in public, but I do sometimes use it for Set when I pray to him alone. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this sermon, and you'd like to read some more, please check out desertofset.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. Set bless.